Now we'll be talking about how to create a stacked and clustered column. First, you'll notice that normally when you open up the visualizations for Power BI, your only options for these column charts is the stacked column and the clustered column. In order to bypass this, what we're going to be doing is creating a stacked column chart with blanks in the middle. Here you can see that I have a blank in between each one and covering up those blanks afterwards so that we can have the visual that we are desiring. So let's get started. I'm going to start off with a blank canvas and first I'm going to recreate that chart as close as possible with using the default settings. So I'm going to enter a stacked column and enter the information that we need. So I have sales in the value. I have it by product and by country. So I'm going to do both. And I have the years in the legend. I'm going to drill this down and also filter this graph so that the country is only for Canada and US, just to simplify this visual. Great, so this is the default chart by Power BI and you'll notice that we do have the information we want, which is the years stacked and the product and country. However, it's quite hard to digest because there's no space in between the products and that's what we're going to be entering now. The method we're going to be using is actually very similar to our ordering method, the custom ordering. So what we're going to be doing is ordering our information. However, we're also going to be adding blank lines in between. One thing to note is that you want to ensure that you're going to be using this method for the top field product rather than country. If you do it for country, it's going to look a little bit different. Again, similar to the custom ordering method, there are two ways to do this. One is a more simple and quick way, which is to simply enter your data manually so that this information can get picked up. And the other method would be to have it all more dynamic and calculated. This is much more time consuming and it takes some effort to set up, but the benefits of having it all dynamic is that if you do update your base data and let's say the product names change in the future, or maybe there's more products in the future, in that case, that can all be dynamically picked up in your calculations. We'll go through both methods, but for now, let's start off with the simpler manual method. So first, I'm going to create a matrix and put in our product information because I want to make sure that I don't have any typos when I type in this information. And I'm also going to put in my sales data so that I know what the order I want is. And now I'm going to export this. Okay, now that I have this information, recall that I, we want to now add some blanks in between. But instead of adding just a blank, we actually want to label them with something because if we just have blank cells, Power BI is not going to be able to recognize them. So let's use the original product name and just add a slight differentiator. Perhaps I'll say blank, but this doesn't have to be the word you use, you can just say X or anything really and ensure that you cover for all the products. Now you can enter in your order manually, but if you want to do it by a formula and simply rank them, I would suggest also entering in the sales information so that the blank sales is in between the actual sales. And that way the order will pick it up so that there's an actual blank, actual blank, actual blank. So let's do that. I'm going to just take this and to keep it simple, I'm just going to take that and minus one. You can do minus 0 0.001 or even take the average between the two numbers. But once that's over, I'll take an order. And by descending. Great. And now you can see that if I take the order, It'll show up as a real product followed by a blank product, real product followed by a blank product. Okay, now that I'm happy with it, I'm going to copy this and enter this manually into our Power BI. Enter data. Okay, I actually don't need the sales data anymore since we have the order. And I'm going to rename this product order and blanks. 
now that the table has loaded let's go check on it and ensure that when you click into this column you're gonna, you're gonna change the order column tools sort by column to the order that way when you sort you're going to ensure that you have the real product followed by the blank product there's one more thing to check which is the relationship ensure that there's an arrow pointing towards your actual data if not you'll enter the relationship manually which we covered earlier okay now we can come back here and replace this product that you used originally with the new product, with the order that we want. And I'm gonna filter down. All right, and at first you'll notice that there's no change. The blanks don't seem to be showing up. That's because there's no value associated with it. And Power BI by default removes any, any label without a value. But since we do want it, we, all you have to click on is this little carrot on product and show items with no data. Great, and now we have these blanks in between. And you'll have to change some of the visuals to your liking. So usually we want to remove the space between these two. All you have to do is go to your X axis, change your inner padding to zero. Here we go. We also don't need this final blank since it's actually just at the end. So all I have to do is filter that out. And this one. And then finally, these blanks. Unfortunately, there's no easy way to get rid of them. So our best approach will be to cover them up with squares. Let me know if you know of a better way to go about this. Uh, I'm sure there is something, but I do find that this is a pretty straightforward method. And there doesn't seem to be a real issue. So we would just cover them up. Great, now we have a clustered and stacked column graph. You can click into them and it'll affect the entire chart.